Hey, welcome to this week's Home Experience Talk. I am here with my friend, Josh Zuspan. Josh, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Out there, I always have to tell people like, hey, we're actually talking to people. Yes. Sometimes hard when you're videoing, but we know so many of you now, and Josh has started to kind of get to know a lot of people that yeah. call the difference their home. Yeah. And so it's been neat. We, we, we sort of imagine you as we as we we're talking to you. I, I thought it would be neat to sit down with Josh. Many of you, if you came out to our, our Easter uh, beach extravaganza, mm -hmm. um, it was amazing out there. It was, it really was. And uh, Josh and I have been walking together. We've known each other for uh, 10 years. Yeah, um, 10 years. Yeah. And have served together in uh, different ministry things, never in the same church. Mm -hmm. But we just kind of got to know each other and um, and we're gonna tell a little bit of that story because I think it's important for you to kind of know him a little bit and know his story. He's got a great story. And I think sometimes through our pains and difficulties and hurts, we grow the most. Yeah. And I think we avoid those things yeah. a lot of times. But looking back, because we have a little gray hair on us, um, we, bit. we, yours is kind of blondy, kind of gray, but, yeah. um, we, we, we've learned some things. And so the goal is that we want to share some of that wisdom. And I think Josh has some wisdom to share with you as well. We could spend probably an hour talking about all the <laughs> things that God has done in his life, because sure. there's been so many things from, you know, you, you found the Lord at the age of 14. You had an mm -hmm. experience where you, you just knew that yeah. salvation was for you. Yeah. And then a year later, you find out your mom is diagnosed with terminal cancer. Yes. And uh, we could go into all of that. Um, it shaped part of the the man that you, that you are now. But I kind of want to fast forward and really kind of talk through uh, your life as a married man mm -hmm. and some of the things that God has had sort of called you into in your life. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of pick it up where you and 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 uh, Alicia got married at the age of 19. You were in college. Yes. And so to save money, business transaction, you guys said we're gonna get married, and yeah. you, you did that and started your your life together. Yes. At that moment, even though you had had this experience with God at the age of 14, where was your wife at in her uh, walk with the Lord? Uh, we kind of equated. Uh, walking with the Lord is being in church. Mm. Okay. And, and if you go to church, yep. your walk with the Lord is going well. If yep. you're not, it's probably not going as well. Yes, if you're if you're a Christian, a you go people, to church. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people feel and that way. And if you go to church, you're a Christian. Sure. So. And that's kind of baby steps. I think that's where a lot of people start. Yes. I, I, mean, I mean, that's where I started. Sure. But I didn't really know there was any more. Correct. And so you start living your life and, and, um, and you start getting into sort of the busyness of career. Yeah. And you like like most men, are wired with this thing. Ladies, I'm just telling you, most of us guys are wired, hardwired, to be a provider. Yes. It's the hunter and gatherer thing. Like, yes. it, it just is. It's hardwired into us. I'm telling you the truth about that because if you are in a relationship or are going to be in a relationship, you need to know we're hardwired for that. Yes. And that's a good thing. Yes. Like, we it's God-given. Yes, we want to take care of. Yeah. But there's a fine line. And if we don't understand who our provider is, yes. it kind of goes off the rails. Pick us up there where sure. you're married, you got, you know, you're working now, and where did where did your mindset go from that? Okay, I'm going to provide to off the rails. Uh, it, the busyness of life. It's the short version is that it's the busyness of life tells us that we have to do these things. We have to pay the bills. We have to have a roof over our head. We have to, we have to, we have to. Uh, what nobody tells us is we have to make time for the one that we love. We, right. We have to engage in conversation. We have to create intimate moments. Right. Uh, nobody, we expect that to be a very natural and it's just going to happen because yeah. you want it to. Right. We got married. So it's all the fun. Yeah. It's, of course it's going to happen. Right. Uh, but the busyness that has to happen always takes away from that. Yeah. It always does. Yeah. And, and, and that's how you know it's, it, that's the enemy. Yeah. The, the, what, even before it's the enemy, it's the enemy. Right. It's distractions. Yeah. It's taking you away from, if you go all the way back to that 14 year old boy, and that moment of purity that you had with God to know, wow, he, he thought enough of me yeah. to absolve me of my sins. You knew that, you received that. Yes. But from then on forward, it was just a, it was just a name tag that you wore yeah. because you didn't know kind of what to do with it. So now all of a sudden you get married. Yes. Did, did you have kids right away? Did you wait no, a little bit? We, uh, 
our we wanted to okay uh, but our son was very hard to come by it took okay. five years wow uh, before we uh, before at least he was, and, was pregnant yeah uh, and that's that's a story for another time all right all uh, in and of itself it so, really is so you're trying to get pregnant i'm assuming your work was 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 busy and sure it was uh we left college to work okay um that's what happens when you don't plan on anything happening <laughs> right so we we left college to to start a career so that we could provide and we could have this great marriage together which we knew we were going to have a great marriage together and yep uh and we didn't spend any we couldn't spend any time together uh literally we she would she had wednesday off and i had wednesday off and every other day she would work days and i would work nights wow so you literally didn't see each other except for one day a week yes which is hard to sustain a marriage that way so all the while this is going on for a period of time you didn't really have community you didn't really you weren't going to church you wouldn't have community christian no. community um but then one day as you're in this busy life uh a friend invites your wife and your brother's wife yes well and you all mm -hmm. to to, go, to come to their church yes and they agree that it would be a great idea yeah, absolutely and you and your brother say i think it's a great idea for you guys to go too yes and you did what on Sundays we, we when they went? We played softball. You played softball. Yes, we we played in a uh, in a fun league softball, and Sunday mornings was our practice time. Okay, so be be honest with me on this because maybe this will relate to some of the guys out there. I mean, you 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 knew Christ. Yes. You had faith. I mean, you, you knew sure. the truth about who He was, but there was a reason why you didn't want to go to church. Right. And that softball was more intriguing to you why yeah it was just more fun there you go and what i didn't need church i was saved right i didn't need it right i had i, I had my you had your golden ticket yes and that was it that was it the, see the, the the problem and this is a really good thing that he's highlighting right here is the problem is when you when you minister in that way and you're and you're focusing everybody on avoiding hell and getting heaven you're missing out the best part of life that yes. you can have a life here lived for the kingdom yep. and that life here can be super amazing and we're we're getting that now we're understanding that as we're a little we're a little older now yes and and we're, we're surrendering to the things that god wants us to surrender and we're like oh this life is way better than the one i was trying to create for myself yeah so so you eventually you don't have softball practice that one sunday and you guys go and you're greeted with community yes. and suddenly now you're part of yeah. this this church and so still got the striving problem right sure. got to provide got to go 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 fast right. That overlaps now into the church because here's what happens. I'm just going to tell you the truth as somebody who pastored a church and needed a lot of volunteers. We see a guy like you who can get a lot done. He's a pretty talented guy. He knows a lot. He can, he can fix things. He can do things and lead things. Natural leader. We, t we tend to pull them in. And, and you got pulled in to mm -hmm. service and feels good too, right? Yep. And so much so that you start volunteering in youth. And as you're volunteering in that youth, eventually they go, you know, you'd make a great youth director. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually, really, well, how about you shepherd these youth? You become yeah. the youth pastor mm -hmm. at this church. And so you did that. And did. and you enjoyed it. I mean, I did. it's not, not enjoyable. It's good to work for the Lord. Absolutely. It's good. However, what was the problem? Uh, the problem was it was just another, it was another striving on top of <laughs> striving to provide for a family. Yeah. So, here, so you, you tell, tell us about how you felt like at home and then how you felt with all these people now that you had over here. Uh, the same, that same provider mentality that we have to serve our family and to provide for them, it, it equates to, I love you, therefore I will provide for you. Well, it's really hard as a guy for us not to look at our relationship with God and go, I love you, God. So let me I'm work go for you. Do all this stuff. Let for me you. just. I let yeah. me show you how much by just working yeah. for you. Yeah, I'm going to prove it to you. Yeah, and and that all all that does is create another uh, striving. And it's a pressure. It's another pressure to do, and meanwhile, we're back to that place of no intimacy, uh, no time together, and where <clears throat> where it left me empty. Uh, it left Alicia completely vacated because she lost me in the equation. Right. 
right? So now she's looking at the church as like, yeah. you were supposed to help us connect yeah. in intimacy. Isn't this about intimacy? Like I have yeah. nothing with him. You're, you've taken all of his time. Yeah. So obviously that would be very, very yeah. difficult for her. So that leads to you guys deciding we need to separate for, yeah. for how long? Well, it, that led to Alicia coming to me and going, I'm out. Wow. I'm out. It was not she a. She couldn't take it anymore. It was not a mutual decision. She did not feel like I could change. Um, I had some hurts, and I didn't feel she could change. Mm. And we weren't connecting at all. Or you weren't even seeing each other. So the uh, at that point, we had our son was in kindergarten, and uh, we made arrangements that she was going to move out at the end of that school year within a month, about a month. And so she got an apartment. Uh, we split time with our son and we parented together, set up ground rules about how we would handle the separation uh, just to kind of protect each other and to protect him. And we started to live apart. But you never, you never, you never started really moving towards a legal divorce? No. So there was yeah. some, there was something there that God was protecting you from, even when you didn't even know it, because you felt like it was over. Yes. Right. Yes. She probably felt like it was over. Yeah. There's these two words I love, but God. Yes. So you go about this for a year. You you step down from youth pastoring mm -hmm. and all that, and because like how are you going to do that? And you, yep. you stepped feel, away from that church. You probably completely. feel yeah. You probably feel guilt and some shame. For there's all this stuff is going on, and you don't feel worthy, right? I mean, there's. Yeah. The enemy's getting his way here. You understand how he's doing it. He's doing it through distraction and busyness. Okay, yes. he's a good man, but yet he's just completely thinking he has to do all these things for God. So a year, this goes on, and 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 all these things. And in that year, you find some community and mm -hmm. start walking with some people and start focusing on Josh. Like God, do what you want to do in me. I got some stuff that needs yeah. to be really cleaned out. And you finally turned over your marriage and how that's all going to work out. And said, God, I can't fix it. I don't even know how to do it. I'm out in the sense of like, here, yeah. you got to do something with this. Yeah. You got to fix me. Mm -hmm. Beautiful thing to say to God. Honestly, that's a great thing to say to God. I think all of us, in, if you're married or going to get married, work on yourself. You know, like, like you can't fix that other person. God can, but you got to work on yourself. Yeah. So you do that. And over the course of a year, it still looks like it's over except for thanksgiving that year you, yeah that you was, have your child so we uh we had made arrangements we had divvied up the holidays you're getting thanksgiving she's getting christmas yes. and, <laughs> and and to look back and know that had it been the other way around we probably would not have reconciled but god orchestrated it he did because eli and i went with family on an rv trip up to alabama uh, Alicia had made arrangements uh, with with friends that fell apart, mm -hmm. and uh, she was not uh, she was not speaking to her family, or family wasn't really speaking to her at the time. Right. And she found herself all alone on Thanksgiving. Wow, and that'd be tough. It was, and as 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 much as it hurts me to think about that now, it's what saved our marriage, mm -hmm. and I'm, I thank God for it because in that moment it didn't turn her heart back towards me as her husband, but as to me as a parent. Mm. And she said, I don't want Josh to feel this on Christmas. Mm. Wow. So, okay. So what happened? She invited me to come and spend Christmas Eve Easy. at the house, at her apartment, um, that we could, Eli could wake up to both parents being there. And then we and you're started. You're still married at this point. Yeah, and we. So but it's still weird, right? Uh, well, I slept slept on a couch. <laughs> yeah. And because we at, after that Crazy. we started dating, um, hmm. I would come pick her up, drop her off at the end of the night, and we That's just started working man. on a relationship again yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. <coughs> I, I love that. Um, I think that gives a lot of people hope. Maybe in that, no matter how far you think it is. And I mean, I mean, they thought it was over. Yes. That God's like, mm, hey, before you, you know, start, like, will you just turn it all over to me? This reminds me of Jesus saying, you know, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, yeah. and I will give you rest because yeah. you're, you're battling this by yourself and you were never meant to do that by yourself. 
So you start dating, you reconcile, and now you're like, okay, we gotta, we got, we have to go back into Christian community. We gotta find. But, uh, not at that time. Not yet. Alicia still had a lot of church hurt from 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 what had happened before. Yeah. I understand. Before, okay. uh, but before we had reconciled, uh, God orchestrated to bring a uh, through my work uh, a family that invited me to church to a new church. Uh, we started driving across the bridge to go to a church in Clearwater. Uh, Eli and I would go, every time he was with me, we would go. Uh, when he wasn't, I would go. I would go play volleyball with the men on Mondays and found community yeah. again. Yeah. And then how did she finally, how did you guys come back together to then find community once, together? Once we fully reconciled uh -huh. uh, and like, this is it, we're going to do this. Uh, then we, uh, she didn't feel comfortable going to a church that I had been at. She wanted to find somewhere where uh, you guys and, could. Well, she didn't at that point. At okay. that point, uh, it it took Eli, who uh, in middle school came to us and said, um, "I want to I want to find a church." Uh, can we find a church? And she was like, all right, my son's asking me. <laughs> so he and I went. Okay. And you let it. I yes. like that. So okay. he and I would go, and every Sunday we would invite her. And it was never, there was never a harshness to it. But at the same time, it was, hey, I'm just not quite there yet. Don't stop inviting me. Good. She was open. Yeah. And after time, uh, she started going. We uh, started attending the underground uh, and... Uh, went there and then found a different church a little bit later on. And started kind of re recultivating this walk of, okay, what does it really mean yes. to follow Jesus? Fast forward, because we could spend a lot of time on that. Yeah. You and I, uh, right after COVID, you asked me, you invite me to be a spiritual leader on a retreat weekend that you were sort of in charge of. Sure. It's a community we call Trace Dias. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful lay-led ministry really where pastors come in and support the lay leaders and you were a lay leader at the time and you had asked me but i walk with you in this journey yeah. um, as a pastor and we had an amazing time together i mean ministering to these men yeah. that were coming on this journey and and in that moment you know god was showing me some things about you and that he was restoring your heart for men and ministering to men and even mm -hmm. even women I mean, you're not and, and kids and 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 you started awakening to that yes yes and so to tell them what happened and how you're sitting here now with me and the difference and share a little yeah. bit of that so it, after uh after going through the trace Tia's weekend and leading that and and there was a stir i felt a stirring and uh, i had never gone through any kind of ordainment uh, it wasn't something that I, that was necessary at the time when I was a youth pastor. Uh, and when I had closed that door, God really never stirred at all in that. It, it was uh, that I would be that a... That season was over. I would be a pastor in my home. Yeah. And I, we led small groups and all yeah. of those things. Yeah. That, But there was never any kind of formality to it and no, never any kind of... of uh, urging towards that uh, until uh, until the weekend, and so I came to uh, to you, or and or you had actually sent me a letter first and said, "Hey, I want to meet," um, and offered to walk alongside me as a mentor. Yeah, uh, just as 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 a friend, as, as a, mentor, a friend. Yeah, and uh, and we kind of uh, so that was great, and then we didn't talk for a little while and. And, uh, and then I reached out to you for a letter uh, because I thought the next step should be going back to school. And you refused to just write me a letter. <laughs> you said, let's meet. And in meeting, you said, okay, that's great. But how are you doing on what you already know? Do you really need to know more? And you didn't, um, you didn't discourage me from from furthering education, mm -hmm. but that there was something more to it. Yeah. Uh, that there needed to be purpose in it. Yeah. And you offered to walk alongside me in that journey. Uh, and uh, at that point, Matt had come alongside you and Matt offered to, to come alongside me 
um, and to walk with this journey together. And that's been about a year and a half, almost two years ago. Yeah. I think. Tell, tell everybody, because we try to model what we want people to do, tell everybody what that meant to you and what did you really learn about the church and your role in it and what God wanted to do and how did, how did that example really tell, tell everybody? I think that would be good for them to hear. Well, uh, there's, there's a couple things that really stand out. One, uh, I, in looking back at the journey is I, I, I look back at how difficult it was to actually receive it. Yeah. Uh, it took time and a little sternness. Um, uh, there's, I remember a moment and, uh, Greg, where you just said, look, I, there, there's a disconnect here and I don't know what it is, so our, what's going on? And uh, after some time of just kind of considering it, I realized there was because we didn't, I, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop mm. uh, and, and didn't realize it until Matt had kind of said, yeah, that's, uh, that's a real thing, um, that it's not easy to receive. Yeah. Um, somebody walking alongside of you yeah and receive yeah. the love yeah just unconditionally without thinking nah at some point yeah. the, the gig's going to be up there's something i'm going to need to do yeah. yes or there's something he's going to you know for, where's the sales pitch yeah it's coming <laughs> right and there never yeah. there never was no and yeah. um and i think the the thing that i realized too and this is the part i want to make sure you understand is that when you when you when god brings you people to walk alongside in this deeper journey together it's not just about them like, yes, he, we, we taught him how to shepherd people. We taught him how to open his heart to God first to really hear from him, mm -hmm. right? So that he could then execute the assignments that he has, starting with his wife and his kids. Yeah. But, but also I received in this too, because there were so many moments of like seeing aha moments with him. And, and, and sometimes, right, as you're mentoring somebody, they challenge you a little bit. Yes. Uh, and so you have to kind of refine, wait a minute. Yeah, what do I believe in that? And so. Yeah. It was really, really good for me as well in this, and then Matt coming alongside of us, and uh, kind of culminated in really both Matt and I praying about it and saying, you know, we do see the call yeah. to shepherd in your life, and we can validate that and call mm -hmm. that out in you, and you sort of surrendered to say, okay, Lord, it's Isaiah six eight, whom shall I send? Yeah. Right, send me. Yeah, and I really wanted you to have an opportunity to kind of get to know. Um, Josh a little bit because um, you're gonna you know see him around and he's he's really kind of um, focusing a little bit on our men yeah and, yeah. and gathering them we'll share a little bit more about that as we go we did a, our first axe throwing bonfire yeah. event it was super great yeah um, we really had a, a very amazing time of connecting there and we got we got to take these baby steps together and so he's gonna really help be helping us with that I want you to also um, get to know his wife Alicia she's an amazing lady yeah, she um, really really amazing lady um and uh she has a lot to offer as well and a lot of love as well and and then the last thing is and i'm gonna uh, put up a picture of your current uh, who's living in your house now because you have two sure. uh, boys that you have adopted yeah uh, recently and well six years has it been six years six years wow yeah they're they're amazing kids how old are they uh they're 12 today 12 twins yes um, and I've yeah. uh, been able to get to know them as well. They're yeah. really neat kids. And so as you see him uh, at our next gathering, um, you know, come up and say hello. Come up and yeah. introduce yourself. Um, wish him well. Pray for him because uh, he's on this journey now of um, God's bringing him assignments. He leads a home experience. Yes. Uh, on Sundays, if you're down in the South Tampa area or you can drive, you know, that's really not a far sure. drive depending on where you live. Uh, he'd be happy to have you there. One last thing, Josh, as we close here. Um, one thing you might want to just share with with them as we close it's something of encouragement or something that maybe you feel like God's telling you to share with them I'll leave it to you uh, you know I, I think if I were to, to to share one thing of this journey uh, this long journey God has amazing an amazing story for all of us but it all starts in the same place it's this journey in which we pull in next to him and we just receive his love and just hear him speak over us and to allow him to be our daddy, to be our Abba father yeah. uh, and to, to receive it without any 
pre-attached. <laughs> There's no strings attached in the same in the same uh, note that it was difficult to receive mentoring. I think we we all struggle a little bit that God doesn't have a little string that He's going to pull the carrot mm, back. Yeah, and He doesn't. He doesn't. No. He is so in love with you. Yeah. He's so in love with me that He would th this historical journey of Scripture is all about wanting relationship with us. It's the only thing it's about.